In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I'm going to share my thoughts on five prospects that I believe have improved their draft stock early in the 23-24 season. Now, I know it is September and it is extremely early. I mean, the regular season hasn't even started yet, but in the preseason games and some of these exhibition cups, I believe these five prospects have left quite the impression on NBA scouts so far this season. Stay tuned to find out who are the prospects that I believe have increased their draft stock. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. Now, I know it is still September and we still have a long way to go into the 2024 NBA Draft and probably 99% of the players that will be selected in June's draft haven't even played yet. But still, there are five guys that I believe so far in just this, this small sample size have shown that they are, are names that we have to pay attention to and monitor throughout the season. Now, one name, Alexander Saar, he was already on draft boards as a projected first round pick. I think now he's put himself in position to be in the top five and possibly even number one, but I'll talk about him later. The first player that I want to talk about is Nikola Topic. Nikola Topic is a 6'7 point guard from Serbia. Now, I first started watching Topic back in 22. I want to say it was early 2022. I watched him at in the Adidas Next Generation tournament in Belgrade. I thought he was one of the better players in the tournament. I honestly did not see NBA in his future, but after a strong summer, with the U18s where he led Serbia to the championship. And then after just seeing this tremendous start that he's off to in the preseason, I think Nikola Topic is a name that we have to start discussing as a potential player to be drafted in 2024. I thought after this summer, maybe 25, because he's still only 18 years old, but I think that he could be someone that we hear his name selected in 2024. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. It's only been three games. It's just three games, but he's averaging 18 points per game, 4.6 assists per game. He's shooting a little under 49% from the floor and 41.7% from three. Now, it's only on 12 attempts, but he's efficient. And what I like about Nikola Topic is he gets straight to the money. And when I say he gets straight to the money, I'm talking about he gets straight to the basket. Not a lot of east and west dribbles. It's give the guy a move, get downhill. He has mastered using his angles. It's not an above the rim finisher, but he embraces contact. He knows how to beat his man off the dribble and then cut off the help side or use his body to shield off rim protectors. He's one of the best finishers that I've seen in this class. 18 years old. Now, like I said, I thought he was maybe a 25 prospect. I actually thought he was going to be someone to... That, that we could possibly see in college basketball next year. But now, I mean, I think he, like I say, he could be ready for the 24 NBA draft. He has excellent size as a point guard. When I first saw him play, he was about 6'5", but I think he's about 6'7 now, so the size is great. And I always thought that he was a good passer, but the decision-making was a little bit concerning because in the tournament that I watched him play back in 2022, he averaged 7.5 turnovers per game. Now, I love the fact that he could score. I love the, the competitive fire, the toughness that you see with a lot of Serbian players. And I thought that he made some good passes, but sometimes they were in tight spaces. And it's kind of weird when you say a guy is a good passer, but he's not a good decision maker. And I think Topic has definitely made tremendous strides as a decision maker, which has enhanced his passing. Now, again, what I like about him is he is an aggressive downhill driver. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Goran Dragic in a sense. Dragic just knew how to use his body. He was, I mean, the epitome of aggressive. Got downhill, got to the rack, but he was a good enough shooter 
where he made defenses pay if they were playing him for the drive. Another thing that I like about Topic is that he loves to play fast. He loves to play in the open court. And even though he's been really successful on the youth levels and he's been successful so far this season, I think he may actually benefit from playing an NBA style of basketball where there's more spacing, it's more free-flowing. And I think that, I mean, there are going to be some challenges because there, I mean, there's just more athleticism in the NBA, but I think he is the type of player that will benefit, like I said, from the floor spacing and the way the game is played. And because he's so physical, he loves to initiate contact. I think that he is the type of player that is going to be able to draw a lot of fouls with his aggression. Now, like I said, he's good at using his body and finding angles. And he also has a soft touch finish package around the rim. Now, he's not finishing above the rim, not really a guy that's getting dunks. But what he does do well is get to his spots. And if he can't get all the way to the rim, he has a nice touch shot floater. Sometimes if he can't get to the rim, he'll, he'll spin the other way and then shoot a nice soft turnaround jump shot. I really like his offensive package. And he's a good shooter off the dribble. Maybe not so in the mid-range, but as far as if he gets a screen, he's looking to get downhill. But if he's at the top of the key, and let's say the defender is looking to sag back because he's beat him off the dribble two or three times. And, and sometimes, even when he beats the man off the dribble, it's not always to create for himself. He is very good at driving and kicking out to open defenders. Is a pretty good late passer. And what I mean by late passer is he'll drive to the rim, he'll jump. And he'll find a guy late before he lands back on his feet. It's a very risky and dangerous pass to throw, but I think he's pretty good at it. But because the defenders, especially on the youth levels in Europe, are so concerned about him blowing by them, he has enough of a, a setup dribble to where he can get to or get his feet set and pull up, especially from three. So I think he's a, a promising shooter off the dribble, pretty good shooter off the catch. But his bread and butter is getting to the basket where he finishes with both hands. And it, he's not like a tremendous athlete, but he's fast in the open floor. Very good straight line speed. He has good burst. Again, not shifty. Not a guy that's going to get you with some east and west ball handling or, or crossovers. It's just he gives you his moves or he gets a screen. And he is getting downhill straight to the money. Now, I think... This season, as we go on through the season, we're definitely going to have to see if he can continue the shooting as far as just consistency shooting from three because he does shoot quite a bit of jumpers, at least three-pointers off the dribble. But if he can show that he can consistently knock down shots, pull up jumpers, and be an effective scorer, then I think Nikola Topic is a name that we could possibly hear in the 2024 NBA draft. All right, the next player that I want to talk about is a guy that I feel like I've discussed in my last four or five podcasts. It is Alexander Saar. He has really helped himself, at least in my eyes. Again, some people thought he was a first round pick. I didn't see a lot of people talking about him as a top 10 pick or top five pick. I thought he had top 10 talent. You can go back to past episodes or even on my NBA Big Board newsletter. I've always said he has top 10 talent. But I just had some concerns about him putting it together. And so far, through about five games that I've been able to watch, he has definitely put it together. But I can go on and on, but I will have more about Alexander Saar when we return. Are you missing syrup for your pancakes? Or you just ran out of your favorite coffee? Or you just do not want to go to the grocery store like me? Well, I have something for you. Because if you need fresh groceries for the week, and you do not want to leave your house or you don't have time, try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You can get everything you want, deliver it when you need it, right at your door. Now, you've trusted DoorDash in the past to deliver food from your favorite restaurants, and now you can get groceries delivered to your front door from DoorDash. Now, DoorDash has thousands, yes, thousands of grocery stores to choose from. You can choose one in your local neighborhood, which can help boost the economy. You can save money at your favorite grocery store or restaurant with a zero delivery fee, which is eligible on all orders with a Dash Pass membership. Yes, a Dash 
Pass membership. You get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to $20 value when you use the code locked on NBA at checkout. It's the limited offer in terms applied, but that is 50% off a $20 no minimum subtotal, zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the promo code locked on NBA. Do not forget that's locked on NBA for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. All right, once again, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. All right, I left off talking about Alexander Saar, and I feel like this is like the fourth or fifth episode where I've talked about Alexander Saar, but Alexander Saar has been, I mean, probably the biggest winner of this early early preseason exhibition game cycle and he's played five games and started off with the G League Fall Invitational which I've covered. He averaged 21 and a half points per game, eight and a half rebounds, six blocks per game, shot 59% from the floor and made three of five from three. Now the NBA Ignite and the NBA style game and offense, it was free-flowing, a lot of possessions and it's going to be very difficult for him to duplicate those numbers in a shorter game and just playing outside of the NBA. However, he still has been effective. He played three games in the NBA Blitz, which I covered in the last episode. The NBA Blitz is it is basically like a a preseason tournament in Australia where you have the top teams in Australia, but it's also like the first time NBA scouts and executives get the opportunity to watch the young prospects in Australia's Next Stars program, which which features several guys that could be drafted in June. And in the NBA Blitz, Saar averaged 11 points per game, six rebounds. He had a total of five blocks, had seven assists, three turnovers, struggled with the efficiency, shot 42% from the floor and only 22% from three. But he showed enough flashes to me where I still think that he is a top five pick. He's 18 years old. He's an 18 year old forward center from France. When I say forward center, I think early in his career, he's going to play the forward spot. But I do think that once he gets stronger, he is going to be able to play the five. And it it was something maybe a few months back, maybe even a few weeks back. I didn't think that he was a five. I didn't think that he had the, the toughness and the competitive fire. But so far, he has proved me wrong. Now, what I've been most impressed with Alexander Saar, it's, it's been on the defensive end. Now, at the, the fall showcase, he averaged six blocks per game. Hasn't blocked that many shots in the NBL Blitz, but he has proven that he can defend in space. He is the type of big that NBA teams covet. I've seen some people compare him to Jaron Jackson Jr. as far as on the defensive end, but he can defend guards in space. And at least contain him for a few dribbles, and then he can protect the rim at a high level with his seven foot five wingspan. He has good size at seven one seven five wingspan. Like I said, if you can defend in space and protect the rim, you're going to have major value in the NBA. I think that he has the potential to be the top pick in the 2024 NBA draft. I really believe in Alexander Saar that much, which is something that I would have never thought I would have said even three weeks ago, but he has shown enough flashes, whether it's as a defender, a passer, and even a scorer. And he's addressed pretty much all the concerns that I had coming into to the season. He's shown the passing instincts and upside as a playmaker. He can play as a vertical lob threat. I think that eventually he's going to be a a really good floor spacer. He can defend ball handlers in space, like I talked about block shots. He can play at the minimum as like your low usage big that just scores off of vertical lobs or as the roll man, but he has way more game than that. He can score in the post, and once he gets stronger, I think he's going to be an effective low post scorer. He has a nice turnaround jumper, very LaMarcus Aldridge like I mentioned in the last episode, that he has a just a turnaround jumper, soft touch, high release. He can shoot the mid-range shot. He can score in, in the high post to where he can put the ball on the floor and attack the rim. And they can also knock down open jumpers. What I like 
so far is that Perth has given him the freedom to bring the ball up the court. If he has a rebound, he can push the ball in transition. He can make plays. He can attack at the top of the key where he has long strides to the rim. I think he's going to be a very difficult matchup for defenders once he is able to get stronger and establish better low post position. But right now, despite the fact that he's not incredibly strong and has a ways to go with his strength, I mean, he's only 18 years old. He has shown that he can be an effective scorer, like I said, at a low usage. But when I'm projecting his game, I see someone that you can dump the ball to in the post and say, hey, man, go, go get me a bucket late in the shot clock. And if a team doubles, he has the passing instincts and the vision to make teams pay. So I think that he has helped his draft stock tremendously, especially after a subpar under 19s. We only averaged like seven points per game. and He was just not efficient from the floor. So Alexander Saar is another player that I think has helped his draft stock tremendously. And he's made himself a lot of money. Like I said, I had him at number 30. And right now, I don't know where I'm going to have him on my next big board, but I can assure you he is going to be in top five. All right. The next player that I want to talk about, he's actually American. Everybody else on this list is the international prospect. But the next player that I want to talk about that I believe has really helped his draft stock is Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith is playing for the G League Ignite. He was also in the G League Fall Invitational. And he's played in two games. They're actually playing right now while I'm recording. But he's played in, in four games total. Two games at the G League Fall Invitational and two games at the FIBA Intercontinental Cup where he's playing for the Ignite. And so far in those games, he's averaged 12 points, five rebounds, 1.7 blocks, 42.8% from the floor. That's, I mean, you would like to see a more efficient numbers from a big, but he's shooting 44% from three. And I think the jump shot is Tyler Smith's bread and butter. And then once he gets stronger and once he adds a little bit more weight, I think that he's also going to be an effective low post score. The jump shot is there. The jump shot is money. Like I said, I believe that's going to be his calling card and his bread and butter. But once you add the low post game and, you know, just improving the – well, he can handle the ball. He hasn't really been able to showcase it. But once he's able to showcase that he can attack closeouts and improve as a passer and then maybe even – look to roll more right like right now i think he's more comfortable picking and popping but once he's able to mix it up as a roll man low post score and a passer i think tyler smith is going to be an nba starter for a long time i mean he's still young only 18 years old 6 10 7 foot wingspan and in the fall invitational g league fall invitational he had four steals and seven blocks so there is a lot of upside as a defender and even in the, the the two games that i saw at the international cup he showed that he can block shots had a really nice play where he beat a layup on the rim ran the floor so i think tyler smith is someone that has made himself a lot of money again i know it's early it's still september we still have a ways to go there are hundreds of pro even you can even say thousands but i'll just say hundreds of prospects that have yet to play a game but if you're an NBA scout, or even if you're just a casual fan that loves the draft, you have to love what you've seen from Tyler Smith. But if you've really been following Tyler Smith, you're not all that surprised. He was a top five recruit as a sophomore. Then he went to OTE. And I don't, I'm not here to like bash OTE, but I feel like they didn't do a really good job of marketing him and promoting him. He was just under the radar at OTE, and he was kind of forgotten. But this is a this season so far with Ignite has been a, a great opportunity for him to reintroduce himself to the world, and introduce himself to NBA scouts who probably hadn't seen a lot of him or just weren't completely impressed with what they saw from him at OTE. But he's a different player right now. He has a little bit of Chris Bosh in his game. When I talked to him, a couple weeks back, he mentioned that that was his favorite player, or not not necessarily his favorite player, but that was a player that he had been studying, and we kind of joked about it because he said he'd been looking at a lot of Toronto Raptors Chris Bosh as opposed to Miami Heat Chris Bosh. 
But again, he's still only 18 years old, won't turn 19 until November. And I believe he has definitely put himself in the first round conversation of the 2024 NBA draft, especially if he can shoot threes at a high level. Again, 6'10 shooters. There's always going to be value in the NBA for a 6'10 shooter that is athletic and can defend. All right, when we return, I want to talk about a couple Australians that I believe have really come out of nowhere and made a name for themselves so far in the very, very early stages of the 24 NBA draft scouting season. Stay tuned. All right, last segment. And I want to start off this segment by mentioning I hadn't seen these names on any draft boards. And I follow a lot of draft Twitter and draft Twitter is, Twitter is great. I mean, there are some guys that dig deep, deep in the trenches for prospects. And I had never heard or seen these two guys mentioned in anybody's draft boards coming into the season. But I will guarantee you, as of right now, a lot of people are talking about the upside and the promise of two Australian prospects. One, Lakeland, or I'm sorry, Lachlan Albrecht and Ben Henshaw. All right, I'll start off with Albrecht. He plays for the Illawarra Hawks. And if you have heard the name before and you're a little bit familiar or, or it rings a bell, he played college basketball in the States last year at UC Riverside. He was the 2022-23 Big West Freshman of the Year. Decided to return home. He played for the Adelaide 36ers. He played in their, 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 their youth team. And he decided after one year, I don't know the reasons why, decided after one year that he wanted to return to Australia. And at 19 years old, Albrecht is a very intriguing prospect. Now, if you watched the NBL Blitz and you didn't know anything about the, the names of the players that we were supposed to monitor, whether it's A.J. Johnson, Trenton Flowers, Bobby Clintman, Alex Sarr, if you didn't know any of the names and so you just went in blind and you watched the prospects, you probably would have said Ulbrich was the best young prospect in the NBL Blitz. And that's saying a lot considering that, I mean, I'm so high on Alexander Sarr right now. He averaged 14 points, three and a half rebounds per game, three assists. But check this out. He shot 19 of 22 from the floor. Yes, you heard that correctly. He took 22 shots and he made 19 of them. I mean, I want to say he's on fire, but that's kind of like an understatement. I mean, he did not miss. He had a game where he had 18.6 rebounds, five assists. Again, he was arguably the best player at the Blitz. He's 6'10", has a thick frame, has a very unique game because he's built like a, a natural power forward or, or center. You, you think he's like a bruiser, but he's nimble. He can push the ball. He can handle the ball in space. He runs the floor. is an instinctive cutter. Like He is the type of player that if you, as a defender, turn your head or you get caught ball watching, he's gone with a backdoor cut. The jump shot is, I guess that's the swing skill, but he played in the NBL's second division this past summer, and he shot the ball very well. So if he can continue to make strides as a shooter, then you, you're really going to have to to pay attention to him as an NBA prospect. But he has a nose for the basketball. He's a blue-collar scorer. He showed he could handle in space. There were times where he would get the rebound, push the ball up court, and that's where he, in my opinion, gave defenders the most fits because he can play bully ball. He's not blowing by you with like a lightning quick first step, but he can get to his spots and he has the strength and the frame to absorb contact. And then he uses the defender to his advantage and uses his strength to his advantage to get to his spots where he has incredible touch around the rim. He scored on the offensive glass. He attacked closeouts. He had one play where he grabbed the rebound, pushed the ball up the floor, and he hit the defender with a change of direction behind the back move and then finished with a, a soft touch push floater. He's just scored all over the floor, whether it was out of the low post, as a roll man, as a cutter, knocked down some open shots, played bully ball, showed that he has a soft touch around the rim. And again, he's 6'10". 
He's, he's not like a 6'10", small, thin wing. He's a 6'10", thick frame, big big chest, strong frame. He So he's not a small guy by any means. He just knows how to leverage his strength and he knows how to finish around the basket. He is a blow the rim finisher, so he has the reverses. He just has a, a deep bag of tricks and I think that you're going to have to pay attention to him the rest of the season because like I said a few minutes ago, if you didn't know any of the names and you just watched the Blitz and you had to pick who was the most impressive young player, Lachlan Albright probably was number one on your list. All right, the last player that I want to talk about is a player that I've had a chance to watch for a few games now because he, he is Alexander Starr's teammate. He played for Perth Wildcats. It is Ben Henshaw. Now, the first game when the Wildcats were in Vegas, I didn't know anything about Ben Henshaw. Was not familiar with him. He had a good game. He showed some flashes. And you're like, okay, this, this kid is pretty good. But I didn't write it down or take notes on him as this is someone that I need to monitor as a 2024 draft pick. Then he had a good second game. And then they like ran a lob for him. And then you started seeing like, all right, he can shoot, but he's not a shooter. He's a scorer. Like he can put the ball in the basket in various ways. And so when it came time for the NBL Blitz, I was well aware of Ben Henshaw and I decided to pay close attention to him. And what I realized is that this guy can get buckets with the ball in his hands. He's a 6'5", I'd say shooting guard, 19 years old. He is a sneaky, good scorer off the dribble. There was one play, actually there's a couple of plays I'm going to talk about, but there was one play where I was like, okay, I can't put him in the box as a shooter. And I'll be honest, sometimes when you see an international player that plays off the ball and he's not like, you know, your he's not handling the ball a lot in the half court and he's more so of an off the ball guy, you kind of put him in a box as a shooter. And that's what I did. I put Henshaw in the box as a shooter because he has nice form. But like I said, you watch and you're like, all right, this guy is more than a, a shooter. He can score. So there was one play where he was in transition, got the ball on the left side of the floor, and he hit the defender with a, like I said, he had the ball on the left side of the floor, so the ball was in his left hand. He hit the defender with a left to right crossover. Then he spun the defender around, I mean, spun him around like a young James Brown. Then he hit him with a right to left crossover and then finished with the inside hand in traffic. That was an impressive play. Then there was another play where he was in the open floor and he's on the right side this time. He hit the defender with a right to left cross. And then once the defender went to cut off the cross to beat him to the spot, spun off him, hit a nice soft touch finish around the rim. There was a, another play where he hit a guy with a shot fake and just kind of did a, I, want, I don't know if it was like a Euro step floater. Anyway. Ben Henshaw is a name that you have to pay attention to and check out the remainder of the year. I think he's going to catch a lot of people by surprise if he hasn't already, but he's a good shooter. And he can score off the dribble. Sneaky athlete, not going to wow you like right away with blazing speed or just, you know, it's just the athleticism is not going to pop off on film, but then you watch that they're confident in his athleticism because they're throwing him lob, and then he's beating guys off the dribble, then he's finishing around the rim, and then if he gets a runway, he's finishing with, you know, with, with, with the dunk, which is always something that, even though two points is two points, but it's something that, that you like to see because you can see how you know, quickly a guy gets off the ground and you can see a little bit of athleticism in the open floor. But he is a player that we are going to have to pay attention to. There was another play that, that I mean, by this time I'm already a believer, but there was another play that I realized, like, he's he's got some craftiness. He caught the ball at the, the top of the key and it was kind of like an isolation play and he hit the defender with a snatch dribble and then he hit a step back pull up three from deep so the kid oozes with confidence he is a scorer that that can get to the rim he can knock down jumpers off the dribble and he can shoot off the catch so ben henshaw is a player that you have to pay attention to and follow in Australia's NBL, plays for the Perth Wildcats. He has a, a great opportunity to make a name for himself because 
NBA teams and scouts are going to be traveling down under quite a bit to watch Alexander Saar. And it just hit me. And I'm not saying this is the same exact situation. But last year, there was this French guy that was, you know, had a lot of attention on him named Victor Wimbayama. Victor ends up being the number one pick in the draft. I'm not saying Saar is Victor by any means, but I think Saar is, I mean, his draft is wide open. He has a chance to go number one. And then there was Bilal Koulibaly who wasn't really on a lot of radars, especially for the 23 draft. But because there was so much attention paid on Wimbayama and there were so many scouts there that Koulibaly was able to benefit from the extra exposure and he ends up being the seventh pick in the draft. So I said I'll have to say this. I don't think that's going to be the case with Ben Henshaw, but I do believe with all the attention on Saar, the NBA scouts are going to pay more attention to Henshaw than they would if he played for another team. And I think if he continues to play well and showcase his ability to create off the dribble, knock down open shots, I think that there is a chance that he could be drafted in 2024. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast. I gave you five prospects that I believe have increased or improved their draft stock in the way too early draft cycle for 23-24 again. It is still September. We haven't even hit October yet. The regular season hasn't started. There's hundreds of players that haven't played, but I have been impressed with these five prospects. All right, this is Rafael Barlow. Hopefully everyone has a great week, and I am out.